I feel like I'm invisible. I feel like I'm disappearing. I feel like I don't matter. Who am I? What if there are things we never had the opportunity to learn? We've all been to school or training, but there are things they never taught us that actually make a powerful difference in life. I'm here to share with you all the pieces you've been missing. Mindset, health, success, and more. And we'll all learn together from guests along the way. We may not have learned it the traditional way, but oh my goodness, let's keep learning how to do things differently. OMG Teach Me Tribe, here we are again, and today's episode is one that personally I am very excited about because this applies exactly to me. Now, I'm not so self-centered as to think you all want to hear all about something that applies exactly to me, but I think we're all in the same boat here. So as women... Sorry, men who are listening, but maybe this will help you to communicate with the women in your life. As women, we go through all these different stages in life and they have different challenges to them. And it might be age and body related, or it might be the age of our kids related, or how long we've been married, or how long we've worked. And sometimes it's exciting and sometimes it's tiring. And there's just different challenges at different ages. And sometimes we lose ourselves a little bit. So the question today is, what can we do about that? We're going to talk about worthiness, especially focusing on midlife, although I dare say people in all ages and stages will get something out of this. So my guest today, Jilly Johnston, is a worthiness coach and speaker, adventure retreat host, podcast host of The Worthiness Mindset. Make sure you have a listen. And she has coached thousands of people around the world to see their worth, start doing it scared, and create a life that sets their soul on fire. I love that. If Jilly isn't facilitating inspiring workshops or serving her world-changing clients, you'll find her living in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, super cool, or in her van traveling and saving stray animals. Love that too. Welcome, Jilly. Thank you so much for having me, Cheryl. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) <laughs> and yeah, you're already that, laughing. Yeah. <laughs> that like that last part, I mean that whole bio it makes my heart smile, but like that part just, you know, really, really brings me joy. I love it. I love it. And it shows a lot of personality too. And I'm sure people are thinking, wow, she lives in Mexico. There's gotta be a story there. But we can't get ourselves too distracted today. Maybe another time. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of stories, a lot of stories, yeah. and I mean, and we'll get into a lot of it because it has all been part of my journey here. So Good I know point. That that's what we're going to talk about. That is what we're going to talk about right now, and the reason for that is whenever we, all the guests I have on the podcast, I think we always come up with a way that we're serving people or a business that we're doing or a book we've written, whatever it is, from something that happened in our own lives. And so it's valuable to know people's stories. So how did you end up becoming a coach and especially focusing on worthiness? Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's always the thing that we need most, right? And and growing up, I was, I call myself a recovering perfectionist, recovering people pleaser, and like a recovering high achiever. I, from a young age, decided to, I was actually having a really beautiful conversation with my mom the other day about this, but from a very young age, like four or five, I mm. put in my head that the way that I needed to earn love was through achievement was through being special, was through doing something big and meaningful. And and so that I attached my worth to that. So then I grew up believing that in order to be loved, I had to be perfect and I had to achieve. Uh, and I had to set myself apart from other people, right? And that really has had a deep impact on me. So I was an athlete and a division one athletes are very highly competitive. And then between that and our public school system, mm-hmm. it's all of it is a, like your worth is based on your achievement and performance. So that was a huge piece. And I didn't realize how that was so deeply ingrained and how that is how I shape my life. I made my decisions was always based on achievement, was always based on approval, was always based on what are other people going to think? Because that is how I felt and knew how to feel 
about myself. Mm-hmm. And I, otherwise, outside of that, I didn't know how to feel about myself. I didn't know who I was outside of those things. I always looked outside myself. And so that that is a huge part of it, right? And then the other part was growing up, I was super fortunate to have friendships on many in many decades, right? So I was 15 and I had some of my best friends were in their 40s and 50s and 60s, right? And I had a lot of powerful women in my life who were like guiding me, right? And I mean, in my 20s too, like this is, this is still a constant in my life. But I would watch these women, it, whether it was older than me or also women my age or my sister or my best friend, and I would see the amount of self-harm, eating disorders, mm. abuse, And I was watching these women also like settle in abusive relationships or give up on their dreams or hurt themselves for the sake of other people. And I remember when I was a really young, really young, like 13, I looked at all of these women in my life being like, they're so beautiful and they're so intelligent and they are so strong, but they don't see it in themselves. If they can't do it, how am I ever going to do it? If they aren't doing it... How is anyone behind me going to do it? And so it was, it was this call to like my heart and my soul of, I, I want to help women see who they are and see their worth and know it on a deep level and then create a life based on that knowing. And so, mm. so that is like, I mean, kind of like a high level view but it's, it's been a calling from a young age. And then as I confronted my own achievement and addiction mm-hmm. to achievement, because mm-hmm. that's what I think, you know, I think we need to talk about that piece of it. And as I faced that and uncovered where I didn't feel good enough, because that's where worthiness is, is the quality of being good enough, where I didn't feel good enough and where I based my worth, everything kind of came together. And yeah. then I had people start asking, like, hey, I, I want what you have. And I was like, well, I can't give you what I have, but I can help you see and realize and find your own thing. And that's kind mm-hmm. of – that's how it started was me going on my own journey and then attracting people in my life that wanted to feel the, a similar way. I love it. I love it. And, you know, two things jumped out to me. Well, many things, but two things jumped out to me. I was a high achieving student as well, but my story, we're not, we're not even going to go into it today, but it's completely different, completely different than what you described. And so it just is a reminder that we sort of need to look under the hood for everyone, you know, very interesting. And I also want you to tell us again, the definition of worthiness, because I think sometimes we use these buzzwords and we all go, oh yeah, we know what that means. Let's talk about it. But let just say again, because I think you said it well. Totally. The definition of worthiness is the quality of being good enough. Yeah. And so we all have these, I'm not blank enough stories. Like I'm mm-hmm. not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not successful enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not capable enough. I'm not committed enough. Fill in the blank, right? And so that's like a lot of my workshops, a lot yep. of my speaking events. It's always something that I talk about is what is your unworthiness story that has shaped your life in ways that you never even realized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we all do it. We all compare ourselves to somebody else in some way or another. And we tell ourselves we're not good enough. Yeah. Powerful. It is. It's, it is. It's really powerful. And understanding that because that, that's the thing is like, so we have our unworthiness story. Well, we're also going to have the, I am good enough. I am smart enough. I am capable enough. And it's, it's then finding that bridge right between Mm -hmm. the two. Because we're not going to go from one to the other. You're not going to go from negative three to positive three without passing through zero. So then then that journey is that spectrum of the unworthiness to the worthiness and knowing that it's going to be like a, you know, like when on your speed on your in your car, right? It's going to go back and forth and up and Speedometer. down. Speedometer, yes. Yes, there you go. Thank you. That's like, <laughs> well again. Yes, listener, she's making the hand motion. I knew yes. what she was saying. <laughs> Yes. Yep. That's a very good point that you don't go from all the way negative to all the way positive without going through zero. So it's a process. Absolutely. And every every time we're trying to do something new or learn something new or change a way that we think about something, it, it takes time and it's a process for sure. Yeah. Let's focus on midlife. 
Thank you for coming here today to talk to us about midlife, because I know you've certainly worked with lots of clients in this age range. And you and I talked in the past about how there's just there's a lot of stuff going on in this period of time that can be a challenge for us feeling good enough or feeling what is the word I'm uh, feeling like even we deserve to take up space and we're not disappearing is something I hear a lot. So tell us what, what are some of the things you've heard a lot from people that are challenges during midlife related to this worthiness that we're talking about? Yeah. People not knowing where their value is. If they're, if they are no longer needed right by their kids in the same way that they did when they were little, right. And they are, then where is their value? If they're no longer needed in the home the same way, where is their value? If they are no longer needed or even feel like they're wanted in the workplace and workforce, right, where is their value? And when your relationship changes and you've been together for an extended period of time and you no longer have kids to fall back on and mm -hmm. that right, identity, then where do you find your value and your worth? And it is interesting. It's like, I'm in my mid thirties. And so, and yet, like I said, like I've always had this attraction both ways to women mm -hmm. in their forties, fifties and sixties. Right. So I've grown up really hearing this. I feel like I'm invisible. I feel like I'm disappearing. I feel like I don't matter. Who am I? If I don't have my kids and my husband and my work needing me, then, then do I even exist? Right. And so these are all things. And I think, you know, as women, and this is all ageism too. And, and ageism is a really big part of my work and talking about it. It's something I've been passionate about. It goes both ways of as a woman, you are either too young to ever know anything or you are too old to be valuable. Ooh, I hear you. It hurts a little bit to hear that, but yes, it's true. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And that is, that's ageism. And so we yeah. need to have the conversation because neither one of those things are true, yeah. <laughs> right? Neither one of those things are true and yet it goes both ways. And so as women, how can we come together to make sure that, that we can begin fighting against that and begin addressing what happens in midlife, what happens in, in, you know, in the third act after midlife, mm -hmm. right? And then, and then how can we talk to younger generations? And help them see as women that they are more than being a mother. They're more than being a wife. They're more than their income and achievements, right? And begin helping them see that their worth is not in any of those identities. Right. So I think like that's where to talk. Yeah. I, I mean, I, everything you're saying I identify with for sure. And I know that there are listeners uh, who, you know, maybe you don't have kids or you're not married or, you know, one and not the other or whatever. At the same time, my story uh, is that I had two kids in my late 20s, early 30s. They're out of the house now, either in school or even more out of the house. I've been married that whole time. And I've seen so many people whose kids were growing up along with my kids put their whole lives, their whole selves into their kids, which is what you're describing, creating almost this situation where when their kids did well, that was them doing well. And it's such a temptation because let's say your kids get in trouble. Well, now you feel bad. Oh no, I'm a bad mom or bad parent. My kid got in trouble. Well, that's not true either, but we just, I think it's so many years of identifying in this way that after that long period of time, you do maybe feel like you lost, like who the heck am I if I take that away? It's, it's such a huge thing. I feel like so many people must be nodding as I'm saying this, because if it's been the center of your life for 18 years and it goes away, obviously not literally totally, but in practice, then, then you feel empty kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And this, I mean, and, and to talk to also like whether, yeah, you've had kids or are married or you don't, and maybe it's a career, right? And maybe mm -hmm. it is, maybe it is your body. Maybe you've been having an ability yes. in your body in a certain way that's no longer that is no longer there, and that is that is uh, world shifting for somebody. Yeah. And, and so I want to look at it. And so wherever you are, and wherever you are that in listening in, 
I want you to see yourself in this because it is so comfortable and it is a default and what is what are taught and what it, it's easy to put our value outside of ourselves or to feel needed or to say like, I can have confidence because of this thing, or I am worthy because of this thing. So then when that thing is taken away, which everything in life is temporary, yes. everything in life is temporary. So at some point, this identity that you are living with and identifying with is going to change, is going to shift. And that's okay, right? That's okay. And then it's being able to have grace for yourself of saying, well, of course this is hard. It's been 18 mm. years, right? And so I want everyone, like my biggest thing that I think I coach on first and foremost is this idea of self-compassion and self-validation. If yeah. you're going through this, of course, this is really, really hard. I have lived my life for X amount of years knowing and having confidence and feeling so important in this way or so trusting in my ability that this is painful and that's okay. And let mm. yourself feel that, right? Because you're, you being enough is not, and your worth is not based on how you feel. It's not based on any identity. It's not based on any achievement, right? It is inherent, but it doesn't mean that you feel good all the time. I'm, I'm absorbing that. Yeah. And we, and this probably depends on each person's personality, but a lot of us want to feel good all the time, right? Like Absolutely. feeling bad, not bad, feeling uncomfortable emotions is not fun. We don't want to do that. We're not taught to. Yeah. In our culture, it's like avoid pain at all costs, avoid discomfort at all costs, right? Unless it's like working towards something and like achieving something. And then that martyrdom is worn like a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah. So true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's like, but really like, and I've been really in this in the past, I would say like two years. I was, I was like toxic positivity, no anger, no disappointment, no uh, pessimism or anything that someone would use negative was allowed in my house ever. It was like, mm -hmm. I was always silver lining, be grateful, onto the positivity, this is for a reason. But as I did it, right, we all, and many of us do in our culture, it's we ultimately what you're saying is, if I feel a certain way, right, I can't because I'm not good enough, right? It's not good to feel this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I'm not worthy if I'm angry which is like yeah. a lot for women, right? I'm not worthy if I'm loud or I'm not worthy if I'm too much. I'm not worthy. And so then this piece and the most essential piece is realizing like you're worthy and enough in any emotion. And so as you're in grief and in sorrow and as you're going through these transitions to kind of bring it back where you are is like sitting in it and letting know that you are enough and you're allowed to feel however you are feeling as you grieve this identity. And, and is it also maybe that that emotion is totally valid and it's not bad and it's not wrong and it's, it's fine, right? Like it's not bad to feel that way if you miss your kids or your running marathon body or whatever it is, right? Absolutely. Well, and that's the thing is like self-compassion and validating yourself is one of the first steps, right? That actually allows you to feel into the emotion because of course you're going to miss your little kids. Of course you're, well, I mean, I like, that's what I would think. And for those of you who are like, I don't miss those years at all. Guess what? That's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> there is no wrong. You are not wrong in anything that you feel. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's just not a message that we get very often. I don't think, I, I think that's really powerful. So we we've talked about the things that might be coming up in midlife well that might be our like certainly they are for lots of us so you kind of said the first step is the first step is self compassion but talk us through if i'm listening to this and i'm sitting here thinking well that's all well and good that you're saying that i am enough but i don't feel like i'm enough like what can i do how what do i do to to change that yeah well first it's and this is like self-compassion, combined two words there, self-compassion 
and validation. Yes. And what I mean by validation, right, is like validating your emotions, validating your thoughts, right? So two of my favorite phrases, and I'm going to encourage everyone to finish these sentences, write these down and write them down as many times as you possibly can until you begin feeling a shift in your state of being, right? You feel the shift. Mm -hmm. And one of them is, of course, I'm feeling this way because, and the other one is, it makes total sense that I'm feeling this way because. I love those. And you write them down and you, of course, I don't feel good enough. I've never felt good enough. And this is really hard. Of course, I don't feel good enough. Everything in society is telling me that I'm not. It makes total sense that I'm feeling this way. This is the hardest journey I am ever going to go on, right? And so you just keep saying it again and again and again. And in that validation, all of a sudden, you are no longer wrong for how you feel or what you're thinking because you don't need to be afraid of anything that you are thinking or feeling. All of it is allowed. So let me play devil's advocate for a second. And what if someone is thinking, well, doesn't that kind of create this situation where I'm really dwelling on this? Like, of course, I don't feel good because, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I just kind of sit there and I dwell. Isn't that not a good thing? What if someone is thinking that? That can be. But I'm guessing that if you're here, it's because you don't want to dwell anymore. Good point. Right? And... There's also this point, right? We all have our own process and we all have our own journey and we are all unfolding in our own time. And some people need to dwell to hit that point where they say that I'm done dwelling. And that could, and if you have rep, like suppressed and repressed emotions for a long period in your life, you may need time to dwell and to process because a lot of times we are processing. Yeah through so much stuff that we're not going to get over it in a day or a week, right? Or maybe a month or maybe even in a year. Yeah. But, and I don't use but all the time, but you are processing and you will get to the point where you're like, you know what? I'm sick of hearing myself talk about this. (laughs) I'm sick of it. And at that point, you know, it's like, okay, I'm ready to do something different, but I'm, I'm going to share like this idea with you is what if you can trust yourself no matter how long it takes, no matter how painful it is, what if you can trust yourself that you will know the time to say, okay, I feel complete in that emotion. Now it's time to start doing something different, right? So if you are a dweller, that's what I'm going to offer you. Second part is if you're here, I don't think that you are wanting to dwell anymore. Good point. And so, yeah. And so I think that's, I think you know what it's like to invalidate yourself and you know what it's like to blame yourself and wrong yourself, however you're feeling. So what if you just decided to try on and try this idea that self-compassion and validation might be something different? I like, I love that. And I will have those sentences written down because here I am in this period of life. Like these are things, these are real things for sure. So many things coming our way that we have feelings about. I mean, in any period of life, let's be, let's be honest. Totally. Totally. (laughs) The self-image we have in our minds, the way we think of ourselves is such a powerful thing and really directs everything that we do. And one piece of that is feeling good about how we look. So if you want to feel good in your skin, wash your face every night, make sure to moisturize and check out my favorite skincare, which is Derm Results Advanced. You can find it at omgteachme.com slash recommendations. Okay. So once we are feeling that, because I understand what you mean, you're going to hit a point where you're going to say, okay, I got it. Like, I I got it. I understand that this is okay to feel this way. And like, I'm kind of antsy ready to, to kind of do something else or move forward. So then what does that look like? Yeah. So I would say, now this is not like a hard and fast rule, right? But I, this is like kind of my process that I take myself through on a daily basis. I've been super diligent about this. I would say for the past, you know, for sure the past few months, and it has been 
really noticeable in my life. So first, it's like being honest with how I'm feeling, having self-compassion, and validating, right? Mm -hmm. And then it is also like, what do I need to hear today? What do I need to hear? What do I wish someone would tell me? Ah. And that's, I think, yeah. And so like what I wish someone else would tell me and what do I, they're not always the same, right? What people yeah. tell you and what you want to hear are not always the same. And so I would say, because that's truly like your intuition and your inner knowing what you need to hear in that moment. A lot of time it's inner child work. And and so it's like, what is that wounded part of you, the one that desperately wants to feel good enough, the one that wants to be given permission, the one that just wants to say, hey, everything's going to be okay, mm -hmm. right? So like write that down, answer that question. And then also like, what do you want to believe about yourself? You might not be there yet, but what are you willing to begin trying on? What do you want to believe? What do you want to work towards? What are you ready to start saying? And then looking for evidence of how that is true. Because we spend a lot of time looking for evidence that we can't do or aren't able to or aren't good enough to do something, right? Yeah. And the thinnest sheet of paper has two sides. You always will find evidence of both. So where do you want to look for it? And sometimes it's so much easier to find the negative because we've been doing that for so long. And that's what we've watched everyone else in our life do. That's what we have permission to find. Mm -hmm. Right? But just because something is easy or has always been done doesn't make it the right thing to do. Certainly true. I like this process. And when you said, what? what do I wish somebody would say to me? Or you said something like that. I'm paraphrasing. That was impactful because obviously we all have different personalities. Some of us want a lot of external validation. And if you're that type of person, which I am somewhat, I you said that and I went, oh, I could figure that out. I could figure out what I wish people would say to me. And then I could maybe go on to the next step and say, okay, what do I want to believe about myself? It really like jogged me to think about that. Yeah. Well, then it's also like, if you know that you're someone who likes, who looks to the external validation, right? And you're like, oh man, but I want to do less of that. Mm. And it's, okay, what do I wish someone else would tell me? And how can I begin offering this to myself now? Ah, Right? Like, how can I provide that to myself? How can I provide this need? Yeah. And I think, and, I, and you, I'm guessing that especially when you have kids that leave the house, right? That like there are, you don't have that external validation from those things, those people that you love more than anything else in the whole world. Right. You are not getting the same feedback. True. That you used to. And so then how do you create, and you can't replace that. You will never replace that love. No. But how can you begin finding a different love inside of yourself that can complement and be fulfilling in a different way? Yeah. And that feels like a really hard question, but I like what you're saying of think this through every day. Think this through every day. See what you come up with. And that's kind of the journey towards figuring it out, right? Yeah. I will never, ever say that this is an easy journey, ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hardest one anyone will ever go on because it is the most confronting one, but it is the most worthwhile, fulfilling, and life-changing one ever. And so the questions I ask, they directly impact my life and like my client's life on a daily basis, but they are not easy, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> not easy. Yeah. yeah, these are ones to sit with and let yourself sit with them. There's no rush to answer these either. There's no rush. Let yourself mm. sit with them because guess what? You answering these questions or not answering these questions again doesn't change your worth. Also a good point. Yep. And there's no wrong, right? We're not going to get it wrong or do it wrong. No. Yeah. There's no such thing. I'm writing a book right now. And like 
one of the main ideas that I want to like end the book with is it's like, and guess what? If you do nothing with any of these ideas in this book, you're still enough and you're still worthy. It doesn't, Uh, it's just how do you want to feel in your life? And what do you want to create? And what do you want to experience? That's the only thing that matters. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes what midlife is, is a period where we're not really remembering how we want to feel because we haven't been focused on ourselves for a while and a lot of stuff has changed. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So have you talked about that on the podcast? Have I already? Yeah. Not really. No. I would love to hear how you're exploring that. And then also if you want like some, again, questions or ideas that I also give to people who are exploring this new path of like, I don't know where to go from here. Like, Well, I'll tell you what happened with me. I created a podcast. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so yeah, for me personally, my story is I've been married for, ooh, I should probably get this right, uh, 26 and a half years, I think it is, and have been an empty nest for three and a half. So I'm used to that. I also have a parent who is not well, which is a whole nother set of challenges. I have taken these three and a half years and really almost not realizing what I was doing at first, accident, no, not accidentally. I do have a success coach that I I have worked with for a long time. So I'm sure she led me in the correct direction. But I, I kind of just gradually processed it all and came up with the idea that, oh my gosh, over the time of building a business that I was doing on the side that I'm not even as focused on anymore, I learned all this stuff about health and mindset and success that I should share. Oh my gosh, I could do that. It, I don't have to be like a famous person. I could have a podcast and boom, I had the idea three and a half weeks later, I started. I mean, that's the answer to your question. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. And so in that, what I hear though, is like you evaluated things that brought you joy, things that enhanced your life. You gave yourself credit for some of the skill sets that you have, right? That you've accumulated over your lifetime. You saw yourself with those skill sets, right? And you learned to see yourself. It would have been easy not to. And then you were like, huh, this might be fun. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what happened. Yeah, this might be fun. You got curious and was like, let's try it. Yeah. And that's always, that is truly what I suggest to people is like, there's no pressure, right? Release the pressure. But what if you got curious? What if you looked at your life Mm. and started identifying patterns of things that spark joy for you? I'm a big joy. Yes. Right? Like I, I think that you should let joy lead, right? And I don't, you should very often, but like, let joy lead in your life and see where it takes you because that's usually the universe's breadcrumbs showing you the way. Yeah. And then answer the question, would, and this is again, like I'll journal and I'll write 50 things. Wouldn't it be fun if dot, 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 and just let yourself go, let yourself dream Mm. and see the ones that bring something up for you. I love that. And yes, I would encourage everyone to do that. And maybe as a second step from that, and this is me wanting external validation. So fair enough. Like I understand maybe that's not always the right thing. But when I have ideas like that, I have a few people that I really trust and I'll go and say, oh my gosh, this seems so exciting. And what I learn from is when they say to me, wow, you really light up when you talk about that. And I'm like, bingo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. people can tell. Totally. And so it's not, I think maybe instead of seeing it even as like that, that doesn't sound like ex- you need external validation, but you have reflectors in your life. You have mirrors in your life that uh-huh. you have built a foundation and trust and have strategically kept or placed them in your life so that they can reflect back to you when that spark happens. Because we don't, we can't always see it ourselves. Right. Or sometimes, sometimes we get so in our fear and so in our doubt that we shut ourselves down before we even allow ourselves to sit with it. 
And so I think that's actually a huge strategy that you've put in your life. And I would encourage everyone to do that. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And, and I will also say this to everyone who's listened to this and is not, that list is a fabulous idea. I'm going to do it because maybe there's other things. Well, there are other things. Actually, listeners, spoiler alert, I'm working with Jilly on something this spring. By the time this airs, you might know what it is already. <laughs> Yay! But I digress. So you're making the list. You're coming up with ideas. Let me just say, it's also not wrong or it's not not a good idea if you're still nervous about it. Because I will say, still, at this point of recording, I just put out my 39th podcast episode. This episode will be, I don't even, I don't remember what number, 40 something. And I still kind of freak out every week when it goes out there and I get nervous as to how it'll be, you know, uh, will people like it? So it's okay if it's still nerve wracking, if you know that there's all this good stuff that we've just talked about. Absolutely. And that's like my whole thing of like doing it scared, right? Is, is that's the whole thing is if we wait until we're ready or we wait until we're confident, it's never going to happen. We think that we first have to feel confident in order to take action on something. I was just talking to a client today about this, but that's not true. What it is, is you do it afraid and you do it yeah. scared and you do it again and again and again. And that that experience gives you the confidence. Yep. And so, I mean, I have created like a whole brand and a whole membership around this idea of doing it scared because this doesn't end. Like I'm a Fortune 500 speaker. I have lived all over the world. I have worked with thousands of people. I have, I still get nervous about, you know, silly things or getting invited on people's podcasts or launching a new product or getting on the call with someone for the first time or going dancing tomorrow night with my husband or I'm making sourdough bread for the first time. And I'm like, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. (laughs) But that's also like exploring that and letting yourself be nervous and doubtful is also what makes your life full. Yes, absolutely. And that wasn't that a great segue, actually, (laughs) because with an eye on the time, I'm realizing that I need to pull us together here. But I also wanted to ask you, how can people connect with you and what might they be interested in working with you on potentially? Yeah. So the best way, I think there'd be two ways. So I have a really awesome email list that I'm super proud of. Uh, And you can join either through my social media. So on Instagram, Jilly Johnston Coaching or my website, jillyjohnston.com. I write from my heart multiple times a week. And I, it's one of the things I'm most proud of. I also, uh, please follow me on Instagram at Jilly Johnston Coaching. And then I also have my podcast, The Worthiness Mindset. Um, yes. And hopefully, maybe by the time this comes out, there might be some different things in the pipeline. But if you listen to my podcast, you'll find out about it. Yeah. And so how to work with me. I work with people one-on-one. I do small groups. I have a membership called Doing It Scared. It's my low-cost offer. And I want as many women, brave women up to big things, whatever big means to you in your life, to come together and like be in the arena together and cheer each other on. And we're all in there doing it scared. Mm -hmm. And so it's super, we have book writing, we have podcast starting, we have business starting, we have new moms, we have newly empty nested moms. We have people who are getting back out in their career, starting to date again, leaving relationships, starting relationships, like so many different things. And it's super fun. And then I also help women go from idea for a business to reality in three months. And that's called brave and unreasonable life and business. So those are the different ways that you can work with me. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. So let me just re before I ask you the last question, let me just recap just to make sure that we got it. So you went through a process that can be kind of a daily practice for us to identify I'm trying to see how would I simplify this? Maybe you should simplify it, but to identify kind of what's the feeling going on in us and validate that and then ask ourselves, what would we want someone to say to us? What would we want to hear? And how can we start to believe that? Am I, am I, do I have that put together correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Start with letting yourself get out whatever you need to get out. 
right? Let, don't be afraid of anything. There's nothing to be afraid of, right? Get it all out. It makes total sense. I feel this way because of course yes. I'm feeling this way because, right? Validate, 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 right? What do you need to hear today? And what do you wish someone would tell you? Combine those, keep those separate, right? And then what do you want to believe about yourself? What are you ready to start saying to yourself? And then find evidence of how that's true. Love it. Love it. Love it. And on the side, the even more fun part, making a list of really awesome, fun things that you want to do or yeah. would love to tr- or light you up, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun if, and just let yourself go. It be as short or long of a list as you want. And it never has to stop. I love a running list. I, I, I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> Yay. I can't wait to see what comes of it. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Okay. So that is super valuable. And I know it's going to make a difference for people 100%. And now I have to ask you the final question, which sometimes I say the most important question, but I'm not sure that's really the case here. But anyway, for my Mood Lift Spotify playlist, which is now almost a year old and has so many songs. And if you guys are listening and you don't know what I'm talking about, it's on Spotify and Amazon Music. It's called Mood Lift, OMG Teach Me. And all the guests have given me songs that put them in a good mood. So my gosh, even if you don't love every song on this list, skip it. They'll put you in a good mood. (laughs) So Jilly, tell me what is your song? Step Into My Power by Modern Headspace. It's so good. It is one of those things you cannot help but smile. You cannot help but move. Like it lights you up. And so I cannot wait to check out your mood lift playlist. And I'm so excited to hear what other people think. But yeah, Step Into My Power by Modern Headspace. Everyone go check it out. Yeah, it's, I mean, the word, the title even, of course, it's going to be great. You can tell. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Julie, thank you so much. This has been a really great conversation. I love that people are going to be able to take exactly a process and try it and obviously find you as needed. So I'm so glad that you joined me today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and going into this conversation. And I really, I truly believe this is what will change the world. And we didn't get into quite why and, and the depth of that, but Thank you, everyone, for letting me be a part of your day and letting us in this conversation. And the one thing we can never get back is time. And so thank you for spending this time and letting me be a part a part of it. Such a good point. Yes. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. OMG, I would be so honored if you would take a moment, leave a rating, leave a review, or take a screenshot and share on your social media. Let's get this message out further into the world. Now it's time to head down to the show notes to see the resources I mentioned. We may not have learned this before, but it sure is powerful now.